What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're here for another episode of Let's Talk Dynasty, and we're going to be playing a little bit of buy, sell, hold with some trending Dynasty fantasy football assets. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. As always, this would not be an episode of Let's Talk Dynasty without my co-host. So let's get MFGDs into the building and let's start playing some buy, sell, hold. War, how we doing today? We doing good, man. Ready to look to get this rolling, do some buy sell holds. Should be a very exciting episode. Hell yeah, man. So I got eight players. I think that'll get us about an hour. Last time we talked about 10, I think we went like hour 15. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit shorter this time. Uh, but I got eight players. They're all trending on keep trade cut. So they've either been trending up or down over the last 30 days. We'll talk about those guys. Got some sound effects. I got a whole stream deck that's loaded up of, of things for this episode. So hopefully everything goes smoothly. But let's talk about the first player. The first player we're going to be talking about is George Pickens. Now, George Pickens, he has seen his value increase over the last month. He is now the wide receiver 13 over on keep trade cut. So George Pickens, definitely an asset that people are very excited about in dynasty leagues right now. Now, when we're looking at George Pickens in comparison, comparison to some of the value adjacent wide receivers you see him sandwiched here between Garrett Wilson Drake London Brian Thomas Jr those are the three above him you got DK Metcalf Rashi Rice and Zay Flowers just below him uh, in the wide receiver room but when you're looking at the overall players around him you got guys like Trey McBride, Christian McCaffrey, a 26 early first round pick, maybe DK Metcalf, Bo Nix. These are the names around George Pickens. So I'm going to ask you right now with George Pickens in Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues, are you buying or are you selling? Am I buying or am I selling? I guess you can hold two. You can hold two. If you yeah, I mean, one. I was like, I thought I was getting three options, Andrew. Like, what's going on here? Um, I, Okay, so first and foremost, um. Before um, in my pre our pre show stuff, I I was deciding that George Pickens was going to be a hold for me if he's on my current roster. Um, I don't know if he will be a buy for me, and it has nothing to do with George Pickens himself. It has more so to do with what his current value will be and and how he's playing versus how much the cost will be to get him. As you know, it's always more expensive when a player is on the rise to acquire them. But if I have him on my team, I'm holding him. If you even look at the long term aspects of it yeah he has an older quarterback on his roster um but there's no indication that russell wilson is going to be retiring here soon um i don't think that i don't think justin fields is going to be on the steelers going forward honestly um and i think russell wilson has shown his ability in the steelers offense to be able to support george pickens um and he will be a hold for me at this point in the season uh he's playing excellent it almost seems like his um his output was dead in the water with justin fields to some degree but with Russell Wilson at the helm of the offense has been pretty seamless and he's been on the rise and rightfully so. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I kind of agree for the most part. Now, when we're looking at him, I wanted to bring back up that list of him compared to the wide receiver values because I feel like that is kind of the better indication of where he is. Wide receiver 13 is pretty damn good. I, I mean, you yeah. see there is a pretty significant gap, about a 1,000 points between Brian Thomas Jr., who's the wide receiver 12 and wide receiver 13 of George Pickens. When I'm looking at these guys like Rashi Rice, Zay Flowers, DK Metcalf, I, I think I start have a conversation about I would buy George Pickens for some of those pieces. I think right now, if you're a contending roster, and you're looking to make a run at a championship, I'm okay selling my Rashi Rice to go get George Pickens. I think you're kind of getting a similar asset. You're going to get the production this year. I think Zay Flowers, he's a player who I like. How good is Zay Flowers? I don't know. I think he's a pretty talented right. player, but he's rising as well, I think, right? Like he's a, he's a riser as well. So he's a player that I'm having a conversation about. But for me, really what makes him, I guess, a buy, and that's what I'm going to end up leaning so I'm going to buy George Pickens there with the sound effect. Um, I, I just think when it's like Chris McCaffrey, I'll give my Christian McCaffrey right now to go get George Pickens. I'll give my 26 first round pick to go get George Pickens. Bo Nix, uh, super flex. I kind of want to lean towards having the QB. Um, but yeah, I think there's enough here where I'm okay buying George Pickens at this price. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any problem with the price. Um, just looking at this uh, value adjacent list here, McCaffrey, I'm with you on that one. 26 first could be, could be kind of tricky because because there could be arch. some prospects in that in that draft that are better than George Pickens. But, you know, if you need George Pickens now, if you need him on your roster, then, yeah, I don't have a problem with the 26 first. DK Metcalf, man, honestly, man, right now I'm giving up DK Metcalf for George Pickens. I just say I'm, I'm kind of with you on Rasheed Rice as well. They're kind of 
all three of those guys are kind of like similar to me to a degree. Um, so yeah, I don't have a problem with um anything you said as far as what you would give up for um George Pickens. Yeah, and I, I'm gonna go back one more time to kind of what you said about Russell Wilson. It feels very much to me, you know, if if the Steelers finish off the year strong, which it does look like they should be able to finish off the year strong with Russell Wilson under center, the offense has looked better with Russell Wilson under center. And for those of you that that love Justin Fields, you know, because of what he's done for our fantasy football teams, I'm sorry, the, the Steelers offense just looks better with Russell Wilson playing the quarterback position for them. You know, you're seeing games where they're actually able to score two, three passing touchdowns. You know, they're able to score 27 points in a game or whatever it may be. Justin Fields was not doing that for them. Uh, so I, I just think that they've kind of found their guy earlier I think which got lost in translation for the Steelers and for for a lot of fans especially in dynasty fantasy football leagues is earlier in the year I don't know if you remember this war but when Russell Wilson first got to Pittsburgh Justin Fields was shortly after there you know following him and I remember at the time Mike Tomlin said that Russell Wilson is our starter he said those words like early on in the year and then Russell Wilson got hurt right and then Justin Fields got onto the field he started playing some football won some football games for the Pittsburgh Steelers and then everybody's like well, why would you ever bench Justin Fields? He said Russell Wilson was his starter way before. Justin, Justin Fields literally did his job as the backup quarterback. The starter <laughs> got injured. The backup came in. He kept the ship afloat. Then the starter came back. Don't worry, Justin Fields fans. It's not. They'll be a Carolina Panther next year, and oh they'll they'll God. advertise him as the next coming of Cam Newton. Like I could already see it. So don't worry, uh, Justin Fields. He's a hold too right now. If you Didn't, have. Uh, my- Back in the day, didn't Carolina make a phone call to try and trade up for uh, Justin anyways? Yeah. I think it was a different, you know, a different office. They've been through a couple offices now in Carolina, but I think it was a different office. But I think they made a phone call. So anyways, that was the first guy that I wanted to talk about. Let's go talk about another riser. And we actually mentioned his name. I'm going to talk about Bo Nix. Bo Nix has been rising over the last month, now all the way up to QB14 over on Keep Trade Cut. And I think obviously this has to do with the play from Bo Nix in our Dynasty Fantasy Football Leagues. He has had himself a month of football i think he has i'm just quoting this off the top of my head so so fact check me in the comments if i'm wrong but i want to say he had three or four different qb1 performances over the last five weeks uh he's just been playing some good ball man it looks like sean payton did find his guy and we all kind of talked about bo nicks going too high in the draft but bo nicks looks like he's nfl ready i want to look at some of these value adjacent quarterbacks he is now the qb14 so above him we have guys like caleb williams at qb11 brock purdy at qb12 drake may at QB 13. Below Bo Nix, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, and J.J. McCarthy. So right now at QB 14, that's kind of where he's sitting amongst the quarterback group, but I also want to look at the overall players. You got guys in that same type of range that we talked about. Pickens, Metcalf, Rashi, Zay Flowers, Devonta Smith, Derrick Henry. This is kind of the grouping of guys based off of that information that you have there, War. You buying, selling, or holding Bo Nix as QB 14? Just like with George Pickens, at this point, I think Bo Nix has played himself out of being bought because, you know, at this point, people are probably looking for an overpay for Bo Nix. So he is absolutely 100% a hold for me. I am holding him in one league. I actually traded Trevor Lawrence instead of Bo Nix when I was deciding between the two when I tried to upgrade my roster. I decided to keep Bo Nix and trade Trevor Lawrence. I feel like he's so far ahead of him at this point. Um, Bo Nix has exceeded all expectations so far. Um, he's exceeded our expectations. He, I mean, I I don't know. I can't remember the YouTuber that uh, that said it. We kind of we kind of looking like we eating a little bit of crow right now because we laughed yeah. him off when he said Bo Nix is gonna be well, that dude this year. <laughs> in all fairness, in all fairness, he did say that Bo Nix was QB one in the class. So you know, yeah. we we joked about that. I, I think at this point, if we were looking at it today, you had to redraft QB one in the class. I think most people would tell you it's Jaden. Um, you know, maybe most you and people. I still believe it can be Caleb. Uh, but I think as of right now, what we've seen it's it's Jaden but uh yeah man we we were uh we were talking about that I remember the Bo Nix pick got a lot of heat when we were on the BDGE draft party live stream everybody was like Bo Nix you know top 12 what are we doing and hey Bo Nix is all right man yeah Bo Bo Nix is all right but you know what this was in the range of outcomes for Bo Nix because I think um your favorite coach and Bo Nix are kind of like goat (laughs) two peas in a pod um that coach that coach needs a guy that's just gonna play do his run his offense and I think that's what Bo Nix brings to the table. I don't necessarily think, even though Caleb and Jaden to me are still ahead of Bo Nix, I don't think those guys necessarily will fit with that coach as far as um, one, 
what he wants to do because he definitely has never excelled with an improv improvisation type quarterback. But I think mm -hmm. Bo Nix is that guy. Um, it's but yeah, I'm holding him, man, because if this is going to be a long term marriage, it seems to be going in the right direction. I wouldn't say this is the honeymoon phase. I would say that this is still the engagement. So we're still building towards you know that marriage, and so far it, it's looking good. It wasn't looking this good earlier in the season, but it is now. So he's a hold because the one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to make the Brock Purdy mistake that so many people made where there's like, okay, this guy's doing good for now. Let me sell him. And now the marriage is thriving. And it's like, oh man, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have got rid of him. So he's a hold for me. Yeah. I raised my hand to the Brock Purdy mistake. I, I think I sold him to you uh, for <laughs> Sam Howell and a second round pick. Now Sam Howell did Correct go to be the starter. Yeah, I, I mean, Sam Howell did go on to be the starter the next year, and so I did get quarterback play, I guess. But obviously, you would much rather have uh, Brock Purdy. I also was, you know, I had a uh, invested interest in the Trey Lance argument at the time, so I think that was also yeah. partially why, you know, I felt the way I felt. But, uh, yeah, look, man, I, I think for me, Bo Nix, this is a guy who um, – if people remember, you know, in my pre-draft videos, when I was talking about these prospects coming into the NFL draft, I, at the time, it felt kind of controversial. I don't know why. I guess a lot of people really liked Michael Penix, but I put Bo Nix over Michael Penix in my quarterback rankings. And I still had Bo Nix, you know, QB5 behind J.J. McCarthy, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, all of these other guys. But I put him above Michael Penix and a lot of people didn't really like it. And I think the reason why at the time I felt like that was the reason to do so was one, he's he could make a lot of the throws, you know, that Michael Penix could make. The difference maker in my ranking, whether even though I viewed them in the same tier, was Bonix had some athleticism to him. He had the ability to run the football and he could make some guys miss. And Michael Penix just didn't do that. He was more so the Tua Tonga Vailoa pocket passer type of guy. And it felt like, you know, Bonix, I, I didn't see this type of athleticism coming. Now, right now, when we're looking at that quarterback rankings, again, you know, we're having guys like Purdy and May above him, Caleb Williams. I'm still taking those three assets over Bonix. They are quite higher. Um, I think in value, you see that's about a 600 point gap between him and May. But guys beneath him, Baker Mayfield, Jared Goff, JJ McCarthy. I, I think, you know, I'm that's kind taking, of the argument. I'm still taking Baker and Jared over him. J, JJ McCarthy is a mystery because it's it's in the realm of possibilities that JJ is still better than Bo Nix. He's just not playing. So I, I mean, it, yeah, I think it's just kind of like a do you want to take the thing that you can see right now or do you want to gamble what you can see later? But I think Baker has proved Baker's a, like a top five like quarterback. Now it's not like Baker is, right is like, yeah, it's not like it's not like you know Baker or Jared Goff for that matter are like near the ends of their career so I mean yeah I, I still would take those two guys over Bo Nix too but I like Bo Nix yeah I, I but I say that to get to the point where I'm, I'm gonna say I do end up agreeing with you I think he is a hold at this point um I probably do lean Bo Nix over Mayfield and Jared Goff right now as much as I love Baker Mayfield you know you get six more years I think or five more years or something like that in uh youth from Bo Nix to Baker Mayfield Baker Mayfield's gonna be 30 I think right now so uh Bo Nix he, he's older you know he's older for a rookie he's like 25 years old I think 26 years old something like that but you get some youth you get some some buyback and I also feel like uh you know this Denver Broncos offense is only going to get better right like they have yeah. more draft capital this year they're going to have some cap space they're going to be able to sign some free agent wide receivers it's not just going to be Cortland Sutton and Javante Williams forever that's not going to be the way this is. And quite frankly, it's not going to be Javante Williams now. He's done. It's my not going to be Javante done. Williams next week. <laughs> yeah. My, so, son, my son is done. <laughs> yeah. It's not going to be Devon Vele, you know, forever either. Like that, that's just the way that this is going to be. It's going to change, man. I think, you know, that defense is a good defense. Sean Payton, he's a good coach, man. There is no doubt about it. As much as I dislike the guy, you know, he's a good coach and he, he puts Bo Nix in a position to succeed. So for me, I am, um, I'm holding him at this value. You, you know, I don't see a reason why you would be selling him. I'm not buying him at this cost because I don't really feel like, you know, I should be giving. I mean, if I'm buying at this cost, I'm just going to go to the next quarterback up and go to Drake May. I'm going to try and get Drake May because I think he's a better talent. Um, so that's probably what I'm doing. And if I'm buying, you know, in this range, I'm actually going to buy the cheaper ass in J.J. McCarthy. That's just me. But, you know, it is what it is. So I am going to say I'm holding him here. Um, probably boring for the video of, you know, buy, sell, hold. We don't want to hold everybody, but hey, I'm going to hold this one. Let's move to the next guy. I, I can't imagine that you and I are both going to be holding this one. Uh, I want to talk about a guy who's been trending down. We talked about two guys who have been trending up. This guy has been trending down over the last couple of, uh, 
I guess the last month or so. Anthony Richardson, we have went from him being a top five, six, seven quarterback in startups earlier this summer when everybody was so excited about Anthony Richardson to now we are at QB 21. Obviously, the reasoning for this was the benching of Anthony Richardson for Joe Flacco for the majority of the last two weeks. Now Anthony Richardson has been crowned the starter again and will be the starter for the remainder of the season is what they have said as of today. But it feels like with Shane Steichen and this this Indianapolis Colts offense, they are changing their mind damn near every week. I'm looking at his value, QB 21 right now. You're looking at some of the quarterbacks in that range. Above him, Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tungavailoa, Dak Prescott. Below him, Michael Penix Jr., Kirk Cousins, and Sam Darnold. Looking at some of these overall players, you got guys like Mike Evans, Ricky Pearsall, a 2027 first round pick, Xavier Worthy, Kate Otten. These are the names around Anthony Richardson right now. I got to ask you, War, buy, sell, hold Anthony Richardson right now. I'm going to hold him because I don't have a damn choice. <laughs> I, think, I mean, right now, I don't know if I want Anthony Richardson. I probably want Anthony Anderson more than I want Anthony Richardson. I, you can't you can't move the guy like tried he's damn i'm not gonna say he's droppable that's 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 insane but that's crazy. it's i mean i have a team where our team isn't that good it's a dynasty team i'm gonna I mean, i'm gonna start him this week just because but do i have any faith that he's gonna score more than 10 fantasy points no i do not and that is the anthony richardson experience i'm not sure why unless i'm i don't know if i'm like miss watching the games or or, or what but i'm not sure why they're not like prioritizing him running the ball because yeah they're not that's all yeah he keeps getting hurt but like at some point like damn like you know what i mean like let's yeah. get some type of production obviously it's real life they don't care about fantasy stats but still the guy's just like a net negative every game um they bought joe flacco in there you're thinking okay joe is at least gonna make the other players on the team a little more valuable but he wet the best so now anthony's back in and it's like it's the guy who said I left the game because I'm tired. Is he going to rise to the occasion and prove everybody wrong and actually show us that this is it's just bewildering. This is a guy where what were we looking at him as to start the season? Like I've seen drafts where this guy was going in the first round. Like he, he was a late first round startup pick. Yeah. And it's just like mine, like, man, like this thing is falling apart fast. You got to hold the guy because if you trade him now, what are you getting back for him? Like the leagues I mean, we're in. I just showed you what you're getting back. I mean, we're talking about a late 27 first, Michael Penix, Xavier Worthy, K. Dotton. These are the assets, bro. So, like, bro, I'll, I'll be honest. Looking at that list in the leagues that me and you are in together, I don't think you're getting any of those for Anthony Richardson right now. I don't think you're getting any of those. You might get Michael Penix, maybe like I don't. I, nobody's going to give up significant value for Anthony Richardson in a league where you're playing with other people who know what they're doing. Like, uh, maybe, maybe. Maybe. Look, I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm buying the mother effer. I'm buying him, bro. I, I think right now when you look at the quarterback position in super flex leagues and dynasty, it's scarce, bro. It gets scarce quick, right? Like there's there's people that are starting Bryce Young in dynasty leagues there's people that are starting joe flacco they were excited to start joe flacco because joe flacco was a starting quarterback you don't look at anthony richardson and we're talking about it why are they not letting him run we see the tools that he possesses for fantasy football right like he's an athlete he has a big arm he can run i'm not saying that anthony richardson is going to be a good quarterback i don't even know if he's going to be at this point quite frankly he hasn't shown me anything to to have confidence in calling him a good quarterback at any point in his career but we've seen guys be able to give us a year two years of fantasy football production and not be good quarterbacks not be franchise quarterbacks for their nfl team i know this upcoming rookie class is not a great quarterback class i don't expect indianapolis to be drafting a quarterback in this next class either they might be looking in the free agent market trying to go get another guy um because quite frankly joe flacco ain't the guy right now for them either they thought he might be and i think they realized that was a mistake as well he's just joe flacco uh but anthony richardson in my dynasty leagues man you're telling me i in a super flex format i can give you my ricky pierce who's wide receiver four on the damn san francisco 49ers right now juan jennings 
is working above him, bro. Like, I can give you Ricky Pearsall. I'm going to buy him. I can give you my 2027 late first round pick from my contending roster. Damn, I don't want to pay for those years in advance. That's three years away, but I'm going to do it just to get Anthony Richardson. I can give you my Kate Otten, who's overperforming. I can give you my Xavier Worthy, who's overperforming. I mean, not even overperforming. He's underperforming. He just has name value because he plays for the damn Chiefs. Like, I I'll go buy Anthony Richardson right now. I, I just think when young quarterbacks with the tools become available in Dynasty and you can get them at a significant dis uh, discount, which this is a significant discount. I mean, I want to go back to the quarterback position. We're looking at him in the same breath as like Sam Darnold, bro. Sam Darnold is three quarterback rankings below him. I can give you my Sam Darnold and get Anthony Richardson. We're playing one year bets anyway. Sam Darnold has to get a contract somewhere else to be a starting quarterback next year if he's going to have a, a significant run of dynasty value. He is not the franchise quarterback for the Minnesota Vikings. So he needs to be a starter next year. I'm making the same bet with Anthony Richardson that I am with Sam Darnold. I might have to throw you, you know, a, a late second round pick to go get Anthony Richardson, but I'd much rather bet on Anthony Richardson than Sam Darnold. I just think right now, the value is so suppressed that um, I, I don't love Anthony Richardson. I definitely don't love what he's put on tape, but damn, the value is just too good that I, I feel like I got to buy right now. I will buy him in only a circumstance where like, I feel like I'm not giving up anything. Like if I have three seconds and I'm like, okay, I can live with two seconds here. Go ahead. Take this second for Anthony Richardson. If somebody will give me a sec, give, give him to me for a second, I'll, I'll do it. But yeah, I'm not giving up nothing of like super significant value for Anthony Richardson right now. I mean, I he's, cooked. He, he, he's, he's cooked as far as production. He seems to be cooked as far as maturity. <laughs> like, I, 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 I just don't see it, man. I don't see it. I don't blame you. He's, I mean, he's a risky buy. Like you could buy him and he could be nothing and you wasted whatever asset it was that you gave for him. That's the risk. But I, I think this is- Why would I just high buy risk Bryce Young? Yeah, you could buy Bryce Young. Uh, but I don't think that Bryce Young's fantasy football ceiling is as high as Anthony Richardson's if the best case scenario plays out for both of them. He's the worst Justin Fields. Eh, it is what it is. Let's move to the next guy. I want to talk about Cedric Tillman. Cedric Tillman, he's been rising in rankings over the last couple of weeks. Right now, he's the wide receiver 44 in Dynasty Fantasy football rankings over on keep trade cut now obviously this has been because of a few things it's kind of been a perfect recipe for cedric tillman amari cooper traded gone out of town voldemort benched not benched achilles tear but yeah basically benched should have been benched i think the achilles tear <laughs> saved them um yeah voldemort is what we're calling him uh and then cedric tillman man he gets that starting job and with Jameis winston under center and Jameis winston has been helping him perform um a younger wide receiver you look at the wide receiver rankings right now you got moon above him michael pittman khalil shakir below him Devonte adams quinton johnston romeo dobbs this is kind of the grouping of wide receivers around him looking at the overall players again guys like etn Devinson, a 26 second round pick maybe an early one tank bigsby david and joku what are we doing with cedric tillman right now are we buying selling or holding cedric tillman i'm not gonna keep saying holding but, but so i'm not i'm not gonna say ah uh, man i'm gonna buy him if i could buy him if somebody still thinks he's like a one hit like a one hit wonder if they think it's due to fall apart i'm gonna buy i'm not giving up any i'm not giving up like a, a aging wide receiver one for him though like so I'm not you're, doing you're not doing anything. you're not doing the Devonte adams for cedric no, tillman no i don't there's not enough data yet for me to to make that determination um but i just don't think the guys a sell i just don't think the guys a sell um i'm what are very these wide very, receivers sorry i don't mean to cut you off but what are these yeah. wide receivers are you doing then i'm definitely doing Qu quentin johnston 100 like, for me too i'm definitely doing romeo dobbs i'm a little shaky on the other three i mean Darnell Mooney. Yeah, he's looking like a guy. Yeah, he is, but I probably would do it. Michael Pittman, I think people got Michael Pittman messed up, man. Because you selling all those running backs? ETN, Stevenson, Bigsby, you selling all of them for it? Or are you not ETN? Is it name value with ETN? I would think it is name value, NT, ETN. I think... Like, I don't want to sound too, like, macabre or whatever, but yeah, I think it's over for ETN. <laughs> I think it's over for ETN. I Ramondre, I probably would move both of those guys for Cedric Tillman. But that's also because me and you have similar philosophies in like how much more we value wide receivers than running backs. So, I mean, of course, I would probably move those guys for Tillman. I mean, but telling him, I'm, I'm very hesitant. There, there are some things, there are some variables in the situation that will lend you to believe that this might be a one-hit wonder. I mean, we got Jameis. We know what Jameis brings 
brings to the table. I mean, he could he could he could put you on the throne, or he could put you on welfare. He could he could do both uh, <laughs> from from a week, from a week to week basis, and we don't even know. If he's one, if he's going to be the quarterback next year, I could imagine not. And two, Voldemort comes back. Cedric Tillman is not going to exist. And Dude. the likelihood of them finding another productive quarterback next season is probably not going to happen either since they're really, for the most part, as bad as the Bears at finding a quarterback. So I think there's some one future of worries about one. I think they'll be one of the teams that drafts one. And like we said, it's not a great class to be looking for quarterback. But I just look at what Tillman has done, man. Week seven. He was the wide receiver 10 overall on the week. Week 8, he was the wide receiver 3 overall on the week. Week 9, he was the wide receiver 12 overall on the week. We have three weeks in a row now before his bye week where he was a top 12 wide receiver every single time. And so for me, like, again, the data is very, very limited. You know, we're looking at three-game sample size, but this is still a guy who was drafted to be, you know, kind of a a big piece for them. He was a third-round pick, a day-two pick. He had a 26.8% college dominant rating he had a 27 percent college target share like a 21 year old breakout age he had the stuff that we wanted to see and they really don't have a wide receiver and haven't had a wide receiver in that room that profiled as the x type of guy and they were kind of making amari cooper be that but you and i both know that amari cooper is kind of more a slot flanker type of wide receiver he almost is better that way i'm looking at player profiler and i don't i don't know if i believe this but it says best comparable player when you're looking at the metrics can you take a guess who that name is is it a current player or a former player current player and i'll tell you he's a pretty damn good wide receiver don't say i'm on ross st brown they said the best comparable player is nico collins now remember (laughs) <laughs> Nico Collins did he took a while to you know get rolling too but Nico Collins he looks like a top five guy almost right now uh at least yeah. in my opinion I know there's there's some people that are going to push back on that but I think Nico Collins is at least has an argument to be in that conversation um Tillman for me man I'm buying man I, I, I'm buying Cedric Tillman I think that there's enough data three weeks it's it's a gamble at this cost though I just want to go back to that cost I'm willing to to shoot you know my Quentin Johnson over and get Cedric Tillman I'm willing to shoot my Romeo Dobbs get Cedric Tillman I might depending on my team in the right circumstance if I'm rebuilding I might consider a Michael Pittman Jr. for a Cedric Tillman just based Mm -hmm. off of what we're seeing right now uh Devontae Adams same situation if I'm rebuilding I'm okay making that swap um I'm probably gonna try and go ship it for a first round pick first but I'm okay making that swap when I'm looking at the overall players guys like Stevenson that second round pick I'm I'm sending you my second round pick in 2026 all day long all day Tank Bigsby I'll send you that all day long David Njoku all day long I'm I'm buying him at this cost man it just it's the value and and this is what has happened with the market right we're all looking at it and we're like it's a small sample size so we don't want to give up too much so the market mm-hmm. hasn't adjusted but if it is legit this is probably the cheapest we're ever going to get him this is this could be their guy their wide receiver one moving forward this could be the cleveland browns number one guy for at least the next two years yeah i don't know i'm buying him man i, I think i'm buying him and i think that there's enough data that a second round pick take it I'll buy Cedric Tillman at the right price, but let's talk about another guy who has been rising as of lately. We have talked about the quarterbacks. We've talked about the wide receivers. We haven't talked about running back. So let's talk Mm -hmm. about Tyrone Tracy Jr. He is definitely a riser over the last month. And that has mainly been because he has taken over the RB1 job over Devin Singletary for the New York Giants. And he has produced for fantasy football teams as well. Currently now the running back 18 over on Keep Trade Cut. It's a little bit older. You know, we talk about that running back age cliff being like 26, 27, 28 years old is when you want to start selling him. Tyrone Tracy's 25 right now. It's his rookie year. So in a year or two, we're already looking at Tyrone Tracy potentially being at that age number. But he's new to the position. He played wide receiver in college for a long time he's only been playing the running back position for two years this is his second year playing the running back position i'm looking at the value of the players around him above him david montgomery chase brown alvin kamara below him Jonathan Brooks, Bucky Irving, and Brian Robinson. He's put himself in a conversation now with some guys at that running back position. And I look at the overall players. You got guys like a 2027 first round pick, Debo Samuel, Keon Coleman. These are the names around him for the other positions. So knowing what you know, the data that I just presented, buy, sell, holds, Tyrone Tracy Jr. Man, I'm selling his ass. I'm selling him. I'm selling him, man. I don't know what people smoking. Put those, put those values back up again. <laughs> Which one, the running backs? We're going to do both. Pull them back up. You got it. There's your running back. Montgomery, no. Chase Brown, no. Kamara, 
No. Jonathan Brooks, maybe. Bucket Ir- Berkey Irvin, no. Brian Robinson, eh. They're, they're around the same to me. Okay. All right, pull up. The overalls. I already said no. I already said no. 27 first, no, because he's going to be 27 and 27. <laughs> <laughs> Debo Samuel, no. I already said Jonathan Brooks. Keon Coleman, maybe. Here's the thing. I don't care if he played wide receiver. He's a 25-year-old running back. That, that If anything, him playing wide receiver prior just gives me more reason to believe okay after he gets hit for a certain amount of time he's not callous like the other guys have been playing running back the whole time and that's a good thing and a bad thing because on one hand he doesn't have to wear and tear but then on the other hand he's not used to being in that type of physicality for a prolonged period of time and then another thing too is that you said this this is something that you taught me a few weeks ago you gave me and if you told we talked about most of the running backs in the league, right? Mm -hmm. You told me that this upcoming draft class, all these guys who are near the average, all the running backs that aren't exceptional, exceptional are in danger of being replaced. Tyrone Tracy is not exceptional. He is a benefactor of circumstances. Devin Singletary being mid. Um, well, who's the guy that was before? Eric Gray or some somebody Eric got Gray injured. Was, right? Yeah, Eric Gray was like a guy for them for like a, a second. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, he just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Like, yes, he's having an excellent season, but I'm here to tell you the history of the NFL and the history of fantasy football, there's a trail of running back bodies that were good in one season and got replaced in the next season. Not yep. I think he's just he's going to be just another one unfortunately for him this next draft class is going to be awesome at running back and this team who just gave up saquon barkley they're not i'm pretty sure they know what an exceptional running back look looks like but tracy is just passable so he's a sale for me i've even advised people i know who play to sell him um and yeah that's where i'm at with tracy man yeah i mean i agree with you i'm selling him as well and i've already started selling him you know i i just made a video on the channel a couple days ago and uh people actually have seemed to actually like it a lot so i appreciate the feedback on that one but it was 10 trades that i've made on a rebuilding roster and tyron tracy was one of those trades um he's a guy very much one two-year window i think you know where you're gonna get some production out of him year one obviously being this year you know if you have him in redraft you picked him up off the waiver wire most likely you're probably happy with the production you're getting out of tyron tracy if you got him in a dynasty league like i got tyron tracy in almost every single one of my leagues because he was free i was getting him in the fifth round of rookie drafts the fourth round of rookie drafts and i was just dart throw throw him onto the taxi squad let's see what happens and then damn Tyrone Tracy's getting production. Like, I'm flipping that. I'm selling that off of my roster. I think at the end of the day, when it comes down to assets like Tyrone Tracy and specifically running backs, you and I, we've talked about our philosophy with the running back position. Um, I think there's been some pushback in the community this year because when you look at like BBM5, which is Best Ball Mania 5 over on Underdog, when you look at advance rates, like, the highest advancing players right now are like Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley. It's like the running backs that we all faded. They are actually like advancing fantasy football teams further. But those are guys that like you can, we got them at discounts in drafts. We got Saquon at a discount in drafts. We got Henry at a discount in drafts because they were running backs and they were older. And we got Tyrone Tracy in rookie drafts because he was a running back. And it's just, I don't know, man, maybe it's lazy analysis to say that I want to sell the running back. But I'm looking at these these pieces, man. The running back position specifically. David Montgomery just signed an extension, right? Like, I know he's going to be in an offense that wants to run the football with Dan Campbell for a couple more years. Yes, he's splitting touches with Jameer Gibbs, but so what? They run the football so damn much that David Montgomery, he's going to be valuable. Jonathan Brooks, I don't know. They just signed Chuba Hubbard. Like, I I wanted to go to somebody a little bit less, right? They just signed Chuba Hubbard to an extension, but they used a day two pick on Jonathan Brooks. Tyrone Tracy, he was a day three guy, you know, just like a fringe and a roster guy that things played out in his right way. Alvin Kamara, it seems like this guy's never going to fade away. Just every year, he's an RB1 again for whatever reason. Chase Brown, he's looking good right now. Brian Robinson, I don't know. These are all running backs. Quite frankly, most of these guys, I don't want them on my roster anyways. And I I think you already hinted at it. And it's kind of what I've been saying is this running back draft class that is coming in is so deep. I mean, I can tell you 10, 11, 12 guys that could probably be drafted between the second, third round of the NFL draft all the way to the fifth round. And we could get 12 running backs in those three rounds, you know, that end up going to rosters that end up having a role. They may not take over 
the starting job, you know, right away next year. We are not going to have 12 running backs that we're just rookie running backs we're plugging in and they're fantasy relevant next year. That's not going to happen. Don't hear what I'm not saying. But there's going to be 12 guys that probably come in and have a chance at a role. They may take it, they may not, but they're going to be coming in to take a chance at a role. And I think that's going to make things very messy. One thing that I've been doing in my leagues where I'm not relying on, you know, running backs to be competitive and make a run at a championship. Anybody that I think is fringe worthy, that list of guys that we just said, Chase Brown, you know, he could very well be a fringe guy next year. Like, could the Bengals go and draft a guy? Very well could. You know, Chase Brown ain't nothing special. He's good right now. He's He's been fine. He's been performing. That's probably going to make some people upset because people like Chase Brown. They want Chase Brown to be good. He's not special, you know? Like, he they they signed Zach Moss, bro, to play over him because they, they didn't think Chase Brown was special. Now Zach Moss is hurt and Chase Brown's getting all the work. It's opportunity. Opportunity comes. Opportunity shows up at the doorstep for running backs and running backs take advantage. That is the issue, or not the issue, that is the the situation for Tyrone Tracy right now. I am going to sell him for pretty much every single one of these assets, especially when you look at the overalls. I just want to bring it up again. A first round pick? Hell yes. Give me the first round pick for Tyrone Tracy. Debo Samuel? Absolutely give me Debo Samuel for uh, Tyrone Tracy. Everybody else? Whatever. It is what it is. I sold Tyrone Tracy for uh, a package deal where I think I got Stefan Diggs and uh Christian Kirk in a package deal and older wide receivers that are injured on IR people didn't want them Tyron Tracy scoring points I'll tell you what I think Stefan Diggs probably scores more points than Tyron Tracy next year that's probably what happens and and I love Tyron Tracy like I said I I drafted him everywhere it's just the volatility of the position when you get guys that significantly overperform I mean ask ask them folks man ask them folks a a couple years back that held on to the James Robinson bags how how are those turning out for you how about all them folks that that held on to the Phil Lindsay bags. Those looking good for you? Nah, probably not. Elijah Mitchell, how's that sound? No? That. Yeah, probably not. Bad. Yeah, when you get those those day three running backs that come in, they pop off, you get about a one-year window, two-year window sometimes. Um, Tyron Tracy, you're just the next guy, man. But I, I think that there's 10, 11 running backs in this class that might be just as talented, if not more talented than you, brother. And uh, yeah. there's a running chance that they could be drafted to the New York Giants in a few months. The running back position is so such a, a mafia mafia-esque position you could lose your life at any time look at Javante Williams now we talking about they talking about Audric Estime like he like finna be the 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 crown prince he's 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 probably gonna end up being another Tyrone Tracy hey, but don't you got don't, this is foreshadowing for the estimate. Yeah, the, the 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 unfortunate thing is your trade deadline is probably gonna pass when he start popping off and actually start putting up some data points. You're gonna have to move him between the off when the off season starts. So yeah, man, running back position is crazy. Yeah, man. I, so. Yeah, just I'm I'm selling Tyrone Tracy. And as much as I like Tyrone Tracy, and I think if you have him on a contending roster and you got him for free and you want to ride, you know, the hot hand of Tyrone Tracy and see if he can get you some points the rest of the way, I'm okay with it. But just understand there's a chance that six months from now, Tyrone Tracy is not even being talked about as the starter of the New York Giants. That is just the reality of the position. And it's nothing against Tyrone Tracy. That's just the reality of the position. Um, I want to talk about a guy who's been trending down, Dak Prescott. Now, obviously, the reason why he's been trending down is because there was some poor play beforehand. The Cowboys hadn't looked good. And then and Dak Prescott, he got a injury that is going to sideline him for the rest of the year. He is not going to play football again in 2024. The next time we see Dak Prescott will be for his 32 year old season in 2025, still likely going to be the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think that is even a question at this point because he did, correct me if I'm wrong, War, he did just sign that extension to stay in Dallas, correct? Correct. So yeah, he is going to be the quarterback of the of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, quarterback 20 on keep trade cut right now. You look at some of the quarterbacks in that range, J.J. McCarthy, Trevor Lawrence, Tua Tungavailoa, Anthony Richardson, Michael Penix Jr., Kirk Cousins. These are the guys around him. You look at that overall value. You got guys like Dalton Kincaid, Jordan Addison, Cooper Cup, Jamison Williams, Chris Godwin, Ricky Pearsall. Um, Superflex, you know, this is what we're we're playing. This is what we're talking about. Are you buying, selling, or holding Dak Prescott at 32 years old next year uh, at his current cost? You know, the crazy thing about Dak Prescott is that you can almost fit him into all three of those three of those categories. <laughs> if you're if you're in a league where the quarterback position is scarce and he's like your quarterback 
he's your QB too. You got to hold him because, you know, the alternatives aren't that good. Um, He could be a buy If you're bad, if you're just like morbid at the quarterback position, he's definitely a buy, especially right now while he's injured. But if you're going to sell Dak, you can't do it right now. You can't. You're going to have to wait until the offseason, let people realize that, man, I really need a quarterback. The hardest time to trade a to, to to sell a quarterback is or any player for that matter is right after the injury mm -hmm. you know because everybody's going to be trying to take trying to take advantage of you and and, and you know your desperation especially um, especially when that injury is rest of season because in dynasty we all know especially most likely Dak if you have him at 32 years old or 31 years old right now probably on a contending roster and now they lost a quarterback for the rest of the year so let me buy that quarterback from you at a discount and give you this guy that you can keep contending with yeah yeah. So, I mean, I know it's kind of a cop out of an answer. Um, I guess I'll go with if I'm a team that if I'm in a league where I can afford to do it, I'm selling them. But I'm just waiting till after the season to sell them because I know I won't get peak value for him at this point in time. OK, well, so you're going to sell um, for me. I'm going the opposite direction. I'm buying I just yeah, think, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I, I kind of laid out the the strategy or I guess the the narrative for the argument with the Anthony Richardson. You get quarterbacks that get available in Superflex and they become cheaper. I'm always willing to buy that quarterback position because it is scarce. It is hard to hit on that. Also, I don't think anybody is looking at Dak Prescott. You know, you, you got people that are going to say, yeah, Dak isn't the franchise quarterback for the Cowboys and Dak blah, 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 blah. That's cowboy one thing hatred. we know, one thing we know is Dak Prescott can play in the fucking NFL. Dak yeah. Prescott is an NFL quarterback quarterback and if he became available to any team in the NFL I think most teams would try and get a, a conversation with Dak Prescott if they don't have the franchise guy under contract already you're telling me that the Cleveland Browns if, if Dak Prescott became available today they're not interested you're telling me that you know a lot of these other teams would not be interested if he I mean the Seahawks they're ditching Geno for Dak Prescott 24 7 365 you yeah. know this is just yeah. things that are going to happen so for me, I, I'm buying Dak Prescott. I, I look at the overall quarterbacks in this range, and um, I just want to talk. I mean, look at Kirk Cousins, right? Kirk Cousins is 36 years old, post Achilles, and what is he doing for our fantasy football teams right now? He's QB 23 on the on the ranks, but he's a fringe QB one for yeah. our dynasty fantasy football rosters right now. Dak Prescott is five years younger, four or five years younger than Kirk Cousins. You're telling me that I can't buy Dak Prescott right now and get four more years, five more years, even looking at guys like Matthew Stafford, who is older, and Aaron Rodgers, who's much older than these guys, and saying that I can't get five years of quarterback play out of Dak Prescott. And the price that I have to pay to go get him is likely not a guy that Dak Prescott is going to be the QB one on my roster. He's not going to be the QB two on my roster, maybe even sometimes because I'm looking at this price tag right here. And I'm saying Jordan Addison, a guy that I'm debating between my wide receiver three spot and my flex spot most weeks or Dak Prescott in the super flex. You can have Jordan Addison. I'll take Dak. What about Cooper Cup? Yeah, if I don't contend this year, you can have Cooper Cup because Dak Prescott's going to be more productive long term than than uh, Dak Prescott will be more than Cooper Cup. Jamison Williams, have him. I'm going to give you Dak, or I want Dak, uh, Dak Prescott. Ricky Pearsall, fucking have him too. You know, I, I like Ricky Pearsall, but give me Dak Prescott. It just feels too good of a value for Dak right now. And I think if you're buying him, you're buying him at prices that are basically your bench quarterback, a guy that you're filling in on bye weeks, a guy that you're filling in on injuries. And Dak Prescott, to me, is a much better quarterback than just that. I think at minimum, you know, he's giving you QB2 production. Even this year, down year for Dak Prescott, and he was QB19 in fantasy points per game which would make him a QB2 and that's a down year what about the years before the years before that QB4 last year in fantasy points per game the year before that QB13 the year before that QB9 the year before that he averaged 27.9 fantasy points per game but he only played in five games because of the injury before that QB3 this is a guy who's been you know a top 12 guy pretty much every single year of his career but he's in a down year and he got hurt and now all of a sudden people are like well we don't want Dak Prescott on the roster no more I'm buying that 24-7, 365. Give me that on my roster, especially in Superflex. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. That's why I said, depending on your roster, depending on your league, fall in all three categories, depending on what you're trying to do with your team. Um, the thing about Dak is that, yeah, he wasn't having the best season leading up to the injury, but historically, Dak Prescott 
begins to perform better as the season goes on. And that probably would have happened again. It probably yeah. would have happened again. But hey, so if we, if we let Joe Burrow get slow starts and then we glaze Joe Burrow all you know second half of the year, uh, let Dak Prescott get a slow start once in a while, brother. Uh, like but look, I'm out of Joe Burrow. Hey, he starts slow every year, right? That's what he does. So let's uh let's move on to this next guy. I want to talk about uh we've talked about quarterback, wide receiver. Running back. What about a tight end? You want to talk about K. Dotton? K. Dotton mm. has been rising over the last 30 days. He is now the tight end eight in dynasty fantasy football rankings. Now, obviously, it's because K. Dotton has been pretty damn good over the last couple of weeks. Has this been mainly just because Mike Evans and Chris Godwin are out of the lineup, or is K. Dotton or K. Yeah. Otten actually emerging as a reliable tight end for Baker Mayfield, who's having a career year right now? Uh, you're looking at some of the value adjacent tight ends: Kittle, Hawkinson. And Kincaid above him, below him, Tucker Craft, David Njoku, Travis Kelsey. I'm looking at some of the overall assets. Uh, Anthony Richardson, Michael Penix, Xavier Worthy, DeAndre Swift, Xavier Leggett, and a 2025 early second round pick. War, I have a, a pin, I guess I have a hunch at which way you're going, but are you buying, selling, or holding K Dotton? Selling his ass, man. Selling him. He, he's a tight end. Yeah, a lot of these leagues are tight end premium, but the thing is, this isn't your, what they used to say, this isn't your father's tight ends. Like, he, <laughs> like, this league now is full of tight ends. Like, tight ends aren't like blood diamonds anymore, where it's like four of them. And if you're able to get one of the four, then your team has an advantage over all the other teams. Like, Tight end, tight end is deep. This guy has benefited from Mike Evans and Chris Godwin being injured. Honestly, you should probably be moving Hey Dotton right now before Mike Evans gets back. <laughs> you should probably be moving him. Um, because yeah, man, like it's a byproduct of who else is going to get the touches. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. tight ends, you could easily acquire a decent tight end. Right now, Otten's value is sky high. I've told people you better move Otten. And that's just where I'm at with it, you know, at this point. So yeah, he's a sell for me, man. Yeah, I mean, I agree, dude. I I'm just looking at Kate Otten right now, and, and this is a guy that I'm selling for sure. And I, I think it's just because of these circumstances of everything that's played out hey we talked about opportunity presenting itself for tyrone tracy this is opportunity presenting itself for k Dotton. when you are the yeah. only guy there with Jalen mcmillan who's a guy that we liked but he's banged up he's not even on the damn football field most of the time it's trey palmer it's sterling shepherd you know these other assets baker mayfield is throwing the football so much and he's playing so well and k Dotton is really the only guy that he's had over the last couple of weeks um i, I just look he's He's the one point that you could make about K. Dotton is that he's seeing some red zone targets. He's number one, I think, right now in red zone opportunities uh, at the tight end position. Number two in red zone targets. Uh, but I look at those red zone targets. He's had seven of them ever since Mike Evans and Chris Godwin got out the lineup. So, you know, you got 13 of those on the year and that puts you at number two, but you've had seven of them without the top two weapons in the in the lineup. And then the rest of the year, you know, you had six of them. I I don't know, man. I don't think the three red zone opportunities in week eight, the two red zone opportunities in week nine, the two touchdowns that he scored in week eight, the one touchdown that he scored in week nine, these don't happen when Mike Evans is on the football field. We've seen what K. Dotton is when Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin are on the football field. It's two targets for one reception and five receiving yards. That's what he did in Washington in week one. That's what K. Dotton did. You want to know what else he did in week two? Two targets, zero receptions, zero receiving yards. That's what K. Dotton did. Now, do I think that K. Dotton is a good tight end? Sure. I think he's a fine tight end. I think he's a starting tight end at the NFL level, and I think you should still have K. Dotton on your fantasy football teams um, if you don't want to sell him. But I will tell you, at the cost of which you can get some of these other guys, I mean, look. Dalton Kincaid. <laughs> I, I can move my K. Dotton for a Travis Kelsey and just get the end of Travis Kelsey's career. Yeah, I'd rather have Travis Kelsey probably i can go get yep. dalton kincaid if i throw something in on top i'm probably just gonna move my k dot and go get kincaid or a or tj hawkinson or a george kittle my god looking at the other positions even like k dot or deandre swift i think there's an argument that deandre swift even though he's a running back he's probably the better the better pick i can move my k dot and get anthony richardson i was talking to you about buying anthony richardson let me just take the swing yep. on anthony richardson I, I mean the the cost is a little bit high for k dot and um he's gonna be valuable you know the rest of the year, I think, because Chris Godwin is still out of the uh, the lineup for the rest of the year. But week 12 is what Mike Evans is supposed to be returning. And week 12 is most people's uh, trade deadlines. So I'll just say maybe move K. Dotton before week 12, before Mike Evans is back in the lineup, before your trade deadline and capitalize on what you get because uh, K. Dotton's are replaceable on your fantasy football teams and they pop up every year. 
And uh, the difference between a K dot and then a Pat Frymuth is probably going to be very little long term. And I bet you Pat Frymuth is a lot further down that list than names like TJ uh, Hawkinson and Dalton Kincaid and some of these other guys. So, yeah, for me, I'm old enough to remember Luke Musgrave. Yeah, remember when he was good and now it's Tucker Craft. And then when Luke Musgrave gets back in the lineup, it might be Luke Musgrave again. Yeah. 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 We'll see what happens there. You remember when everyone was excited, myself included, about uh, Greg Dolchich? Yes. What about Johnu Smith? You remember when we all loved Johnu Smith in Tennessee? Yes. Yeah. I remember all of these guys, man. Tight ends that come and go. Remember Chig Conquo? We all love Chig Conquo as a dart throw. Yeah. Yeah. This, dart is, throw. this yeah. is what K. Dotton was, man. He's a dart throw and he's hit. And you know what happens most of the time when you get these dart throws to hit? You cash out. It's like it's like you're putting your money on the penny stock, right? You're you're on the penny stock, it rise uh raises in value. Take your winnings, take your money. And then go put it on a blue chip like Amazon and, and make your money off of an Amazon stock or Tesla stock or whatever it may be. Like put me in the blue chip market. I don't want to keep betting on these dart throws when they hit and when they cash. So yeah, for me, again, very simple, very easy. Sell K Dotton. But let's move on to the last player of this video. Uh, this is somebody whose value has dropped significantly. Um, this is Chris Alave of the New Orleans Saints. Now, Chris Olave, his value has drip, uh, dipped over the last month, and that is because he's now wide receiver 25. Um, obviously, we all know the concussions for Chris Olave. Very similar situation, actually, to Tua Tonga Vailoa. Not, not the scary, you know, visual that we got with Tua where you're getting the, the extremities that are kind of stiffening up, but you got Chris Olave having two or three concussions, um, reported concussions over the last month of the season. Now he's on IR because of the concussions. They said he may or may not be done for the season. If you ask their new interim head coach, he says he may be back this year. I I don't know. The reality is Chris Olave, he has seen a significant dip because he's dealing with concussions and it's got dynasty fantasy football managers nervous. Like I said, now the wide receiver 25, that's much lower than what he's been in we, uh, months past. Now you look at the value adjacent wide receivers. You got guys like T Higgins, Tyree Kill, Terry McLaurin, Jalen Waddle, Tank Dell, Brandon Ayuk, uh, all of these guys in that range. You also look at the overall players, a 2026 mid first round pick, Isaiah Pacheco, Josh Jacobs, Trevor Lawrence. These are the assets around him. Um, I, I got to ask, you know, are you worried about this? And then are you buying, selling or holding Chris Olave? Um, selling Chris Olave. I don't care what his value is. Now I'm not giving him away. Don't, don't get that twisted. I ain't giving him away, but at this point, dude, I'm just tired of Chris Olave, bro. Like to go into a season and rely on Chris Olave. And this has been the case since like his rookie season to go into a season and rely on Chris Olave. You're asking to, at some point, not have him be available at some point. And this time it could quite, quite possibly be for, for the rest of the season. He's always injured. I mean, the only way I would want to keep Chris Olave is if he's like my wide receiver three, wide receiver four. And I know that might be harsh, but at the at this rate, that's the reality. The guy's always hurt. And if someone has some type of, of name, he has some name value. If you can move him for something decent, I would. But yeah, overall, Chris Olave is a sell for me, man. Like, I just can't do it. I've been one of Olave's biggest supporters. I just can't do it anymore, man, because the guy is not reliable. And the best ability is availability, and he doesn't have it. Yeah, I mean... I think a lot of people, you know, the argument for Chris Olave over the last couple of years, quite frankly, has been that Chris Olave has not met the expectations that we have put on him in the dynasty fantasy football community. We've been drafting this guy as a top 12, top 15 wide receiver for two years now, it feels like. And um, his best season to date from a fantasy points per game standpoint was last year at wide receiver 19. So he's kind of been floating in that wide receiver two territory, whereas we've been drafting him as a low end wide receiver one. Uh, that said, I think right now is the best time to, if you have believed in Chris Olave, if you do believe in Chris Olave, you should be buying at the this price because this is the first time in his entire career where he is being valued currently in the market where the production is. So we've seen wide receiver 25 from fantasy points per game, you know, metric as a rookie. We've seen wide receiver 19. Now you got him as wide receiver 25 in our rankings and he's being valued around guys like Waddle, Tank Dell, Terry McLaurin, Tyreek Hill. Like I think there's a lot of great pivot options right here for you potentially buying Chris Olave. I mean, I, I look at this, right? I'm a re say I'm a rebuilding team. I bought Chris Olave, you know, so I'm practicing what I'm preaching here. I, I bought him in a league. Um, but, you know, you have an older guy and in Tyree Kill right now on a, on a rebuilding roster, and you can just pivot immediately over to a guy like Chris Olave, straight up one for one. You know, that feels like a dream scenario for pretty much anybody rebuilding. You get a guy who can potentially, you know, give you those high-end wide receiver two or those, those 
mid-tier wide receiver two numbers when he's healthy. I don't think the concussion stuff, which I think a lot of people right now, there's a lot of fear about the concussion word in general right now in the NFL community. And I think a lot of people are nervous because of the, the two a thing and don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't believe that, you know, concussions are no big deal. Obviously, you know, head trauma and the CTE stuff, all of that is like very serious if that does ever develop. But at the end of the day, bro, like people been getting concussions in football forever. Like, I, I mean, it's like all of a sudden recently we've all started to see a guy get a concussion and then we're like, damn, the career's over. Throw him away. The career's over. Like, that's not how this shit works, bro. You, I remember a time, you remember a time where Brandon Cooks had like, it felt like 10 damn concussions, right? And Brandon Cooks was still playing football to this day. Like, I mean, yeah. it, it just feels like to me that we're we're very sensitive and maybe it's it's maybe it's just the visual that we saw from Tua Tonga Vailoa from those concussions maybe it's it's you know it's it's scary it looked it looked scary for Tua but maybe that's made a lot of other people fearful for the concussions I, for me I, I'm not too worried about Chris Olave's long term I think this is a guy who's still going to be playing football next year I think he could still play football in in a couple weeks when they activate him from IR the same way that when everybody was talking about Tua and we were talking about Tua on this channel and people were saying are you buying selling or holding Tua Tua's going to play football again like he play, he's playing football again Chris Olave is going to play football again that's not in in my decision for the buy sell hold I just think for the first time he's being valued where the production is at and you're getting a good young player still 24 years old the overarching advanced metrics when you look at like Matt Harmon's reception perception when you look at the dominator rating when you look at the target share some of these other things like all of these look good for Chris Olave man he's a damn good player and you're getting him at a fair price and I'm, I'm okay to go buy Chris Olave at a fair price and see what happens man I, I think it's the first time we're getting him at a fair price so for me, again, I'm just going to be buying that, man. I don't got too much more to add. I'm not buying them. Even though I did buy them. Even though I did buy them to see it. God like, damn it, dude. And I'm, and I'm a hold them. But still, I'm, I'm also like just pissed off that the guy's never there when I need them. So, Fair enough. I think that's part of it, too. I think a lot of people are... are are sick of Chris Olave, man. It's like you were you earlier this year you had Rashid Shahid having big games and Chris Olave was giving you duds. Um it's like I think people were sick of Chris Olave, but I think people were viewing him as their wide receiver one on their fantasy team. And it's like now we can buy him as a wide receiver two, maybe a wide receiver three on our roster. You can plug him behind some other good guys. It just makes sense to me. Um maybe it's an adjustment of expectations. Maybe the norm for Chris Olave is a top twenty guy and not a top twelve guy. And if that's the case, you know you're buying him right now at wide receiver twenty five. I just don't I don't see a reason why I wouldn't. I mean, I'm looking at the overalls too. Like, you kidding me, man? I'll give you Isaiah Pacheco 10 days out of the week and there's only seven days, you know? And I'll, I'll give you 10 days out of the week where I'm giving you Isaiah Pacheco for Chris Olave. Josh Jacobs, you can have him. Of mid first in 2026, see hey, ya. Uh, I'll, I'll get Chris Olave because right now I'm not betting on a wide receiver to come in and replace Chris Olave two years down the road in the middle of a first round for some some kid that we don't even know who's going to be there yet and what situation he's going to be in, who's coaching him and who's throwing him the football. That's a that's a, a gift that we don't even know, a mystery box. Give me Chris Olave, man. Um, I, I, it just feels like it's just too good of a price for me to pass up. So that's where I'm at. All right. Well, I think we are at the hour mark, just about over it, an hour and four right now before the edit. So maybe you guys are watching it. We're not even to an hour yet, whatever. Um, but look, that was buy, sell, hold. We're playing some buy, sell, hold with some of these trending assets. Um, I, I wish we did a little bit more of this throughout the season. I think now that we're getting towards the trade deadline, it may not be as beneficial to do buy, sell, hold um, maybe for the rest of the season. But definitely next year, I think we need to play this a little bit more throughout the season, maybe every couple of weeks, maybe once a month, just go over some of the trending assets because I think this is beneficial, man, to people. And I, I think people in the Discord think it's uh, beneficial as well. Some of these names were even mentioned in the Discord. I asked people, you know, what names do you have in mind? And the name George Pickens got thrown in there. The name uh, Anthony Richardson got thrown in there, some other things. So, um, um, that is it. If you did enjoy the video, uh, you know, hopefully this gives you some clarity on what you should be doing with these players. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it just gives you something to think about. Um, but if you enjoy the content, hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and stay subscribed to this channel because there is going to be content 24-7, 365 year round. Whether it's football season or not, the content still comes from this channel here at the League FFB. Also, make sure you go join the Discord because like I said, we asked for names. Some of those names were put in the Discord. It's free to join. There is no risk in doing that. That will be linked in the description as well. And War, where can they find you for some additional content if they're looking for? If you're looking looking for pro wrestling pro wrestling you want to check out 
Crimson Mass Pro Wrestling. That's my channel. We're over there. We're doing our thing. We're talking about WWE. We talk about AEW sometimes, but we mainly talk about WWE. So go ahead, check us out, like our video, subscribe to us. Crimson Mass Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling with an attitude. All right, folks. Like I said, that is it for you today. Uh, lots of content coming soon. Um, yeah, nothing else for you today. So we will see you on the next one. But until then, peace out, folks. Thank <laughs> you.